and I'm back with another video for Ophelia Talks and today I am here with the first video of our Jewels of the Nile Cow. We will start off our journey going down the Nile in Giza, admiring the pyramids and enjoying a camel ride. Before we get started I would just like to show you what you need for this cow. So first of all, we have the Jewels of the Nile Colour Pack. It is available from our website. Please find the link in the description box below. You will also need some stitch markers. Maybe not in the first few weeks, but you will need them certainly in week six. You might want to use them for your first and your last stitches throughout the weeks and that's of course perfectly fine and that will help you to make sure you don't lose any stitches. Then of course you will need scissors. We won't need a darning needle because of course we are not going to be darning in any ends. We will be making a double border. So make sure that when you cut off your ends, you leave them about 15 centimeters. This will be plenty to hide them in the border and they won't come undone while you're actually still crocheting. Do leave them out. Just leave them hanging out. Don't knock them. Just leave them hanging out. Now, when we are looking at the hooks, you will need the hook that you usually use for your DK. So I usually use a three and a half. If you use a four, usually make sure you have that one. Now, I suggest to do the blanket in your usual hook. But if you find, for instance, for the starting row, I will explain in a moment, or for the middle part, I will explain when we get there, that your blanket goes in or out. You might just want to go up or down a hook, but this is only in case it goes in or out. My blanket using my three and a half was OK. It was the testers who experienced some slight deviations. So we are going to incorporate those deviations into the pattern so that you do not have that problem, okay? But it is good to have these hooks on hand. So a size up from your usual and a size down from your usual. Make sure that each week you pick up the instructions I give you for any deviations in hook size that you might need to do. Okay, let's get started. Before we get started on week one, just make sure you find the link which is in the description box below this video. Follow that link and that will take you to our blog post. You will see the written pattern there and a table of colours for this week. So the first 30 rows will be listed there, each with their colour. So you will be doing each row in a different colour. So to get started for row zero, because that's what we have to do to get started before we start week one, we are going to do row zero and this is cinnamon and row zero consists of a chain and the first row of double crochets. Now please don't replace it by doing foundation double crochets. We need this row of course, to get started, to adhere week one onto that, but also to adhere the border to that. Now, this row will have a reaction to week one. And with that reaction, I mean it will either lie flat or it will go a bit wavy. If you use a foundation double crochet for this row, I will guarantee it goes wavy. So, Maybe you need to do this in a smaller hook. It might reduce the fact that it's going wavy. There's nothing we can do about this. We need to get past this. OK, so I am going to do this row with my usual hook. And for me, it didn't go wavy to worry about. 
Okay, there was a tiny bit, but nothing to worry about. And I was able to just make my border and it was fine. But if you find after about five rows that it is too wavy, you will have to start again with a smaller hook for that row, for row zero, and then start doing your, you know, week one again. And that way you will eliminate the waviness. But of course, you don't know that it's going to be wavy until you've done it. So start with using your normal hook for your decay and you have to be prepared to redo it because that's just the way it goes. So once again, in these tutorials, I will be making a sampler and I would like to invite you to make this sampler along with me. Now, normally I make a sample of about 30, 32 stitches, but this time because of the stitches I chose and the repeats that we are going to have to do, I am going to have to make the sampler wider to be able to show you properly what's going on. So I'm going to make a sampler which is 62 chains wide and I would suggest you make this sampler either in one color or in some leftover colors or in two colors just so that you see which is one row and which is the other. Also, use the sampler as a stitch reminder and maybe later on you can do something with it. I will be doing the first five rows of every week or thereabouts because it needs to be the row that is the same as where you will end your week. So it will all work out in the sampler, I am sure. But just to let you know, this time the sampler is going to be wider than usual. So. First colour is cinnamon. Row zero, we are going to do a slip knot. So do your slip knot whichever way you usually do it. I am using my usual hook. I am going to go for it. If it does go wavy, I'll just have to restart. So you'll have to be prepared to do that. Insert your hook. And for the big blanket, you are going to be chaining. 192. So take your time, use stitch markers to help you count and you know make sure you have your 192. So for me here for our sampler we are going to chain 62. So let's get started. So yarn over, pull through the loop on your hook. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, sixty-one, and sixty-two. So there we go. This is my chain of sixty-two chains. And of course, you will have done one hundred and ninety-two for your actual blanket. Then you keep an eye on this one here. This is your 192nd or in my case here that's 60 second you are now going to chain one now you will see that every row nearly starts with a chain one that chain one is your turning chain we just do it to help us gain the height that we need for our first stitch of our row we then turn you'll see me turning in a moment it's not so obvious here. And then we do the first stitch of the row in the last chain that you did, because this chain here is your turning chain and we just disregard it. We need it for the height, but we do not count it. So now we are going to place a double crochet in each stitch along our chain and we start in our 192nd chain. So we disregard the first chain because that's our turning chain. We go into here, which is our 62nd or 192nd chain. So you yarn over, you go into that chain, picking up one strand at the front, two at the back. You pull up the working yarn, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And now this one here, which is a little bit extended, is going to be 
our first stitch of the row, obviously, but also that's going to be the one that we will have to use as last in our next row. So we are just going to indicate it. So feel free to indicate these kinds of stitches should you need to. So now we are going to work all along our chain and we are going to be placing double crochets in each stitch, in each chain. So you yarn over, insert, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And don't do this too loosely. I will see you at the end of the row. So I made it to the end of the line here. There is a stitch there. So make sure you do not forget to do that very last one. And look, I can get into it with my hook the other way around with a little bit of help. So make sure you count your stitches and that you indeed have your 192 double crochets. And I have my 62 here. <laughs> start working on the geezer rows I'm going to show you how to change color so here in row zero I finished my last stitch now we are not going to be finishing our last stitch so you have to stop your last stitch of the row before the last pull through so I've just gone one step back normally I would now pull through and finish the stitch but for row one we are going to be using natural so we need to change color and we do that on the last pull through of the last stitch of the previous row so you yarn over as if you were finishing your stitch but you use the new color this means that your stitch here is finished in the old color but you are now ready to start using the new color. Of course, you're going to have to cut off your old color about 15 centimeters and make sure that your end here of your new color is about that length as well. OK, and then you can continue with the new color. Now, when you look at the pattern for Giza week one, you will see that there is a Giza row X. So row one, it says in the table, you have to do Giza row X. Now, an X row essentially is identical to a row one, but the locations for placing our stitches are slightly different because here we are starting onto our double crochet row and in another week we might be starting onto the last row of the previous week which gives us a different row for working on for placing our first repeats of the new stitches that we're doing. So that is why there are row X's in this project and row X is only done once. So let's get started with the first row of week one. So this is Giza row X and it is of course row one in our natural color. So we are going to do a chain one then you turn and then you do one double crochet in the same stitch. So the same stitch that this chain one is coming out of. So that's this V here. So you need to tip it towards you. So do your double crochet, yarn over, insert, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So that's your first stitch of your row. Now you will find that most rows or all the rows will start with a double crochet like that because of course we need something to adhere our border on later on. Then we are going to chain two, one, two. We are going to skip two. So again, tip the work towards you. You see the two V's here. These are going to be skipped. Then working in the third, you're going to place 
one double crochet, one chain, and one double crochet. So yarn over into the third V, and you do your double crochet, chain one, and a double crochet. There we go. Then you are going to start the repeat for this row. So the repeat is chain two, skip four, one, two, three, and four. Then working in the fifth one, you are going to place your V-stitch and the V-stitch is a double crochet, chain one, double crochet. There we go. So this is our repeat, chain two, skip four, one, two, three, four, in the fifth one for our double crochet, chain one, double crochet. And this is what you're going to do all along your row. And I will meet you when you have your 38 V-stitches and when I have my 12 V-stitches. So I have now done my 12 V-stitches. In your big blanket, you will have 38 V-stitches. And my repeat ended after my V here. So I now have three stitches left over. And I have to do a chain two, one, two, skip two. And here in the last stitch, we are going to do a double crochet. So you yarn over. Of course, we've got this stitch marker in the last stitch. So that makes it really easy for us to find it. So you do your double crochet. But of course, stop before you do your last pull through you're going to change colors. So you are going to cut off the yarn and we are going to get the next color, which is cookie. And we're going to pull that one through the stitch. As you can see, something's happening to my blanket, but don't worry, do a few more rows and it will sort itself out. So this was Giza row X. Now for the next row, we are going to do Giza row two. So this is row two of our blanket. So now we are ready to start Giza row two and we're going to get started by chaining one, turning and doing a double crochet in that same stitch. So yarn over, insert, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two and yarn over pull through two then we do a chain one and now for the repeat we are going to be working around the loops here of the v's and we're going to be inserting five double crochets into each v chain space all along our row so you yarn over insert into the first v and you do your double crochet and you do a second one a third one, number four, and number five. There we go. So five double crochets into each V along your row. And that's number five. There we go. Of course, you will be doing 38 five double crochet shells and I will be doing 12 of them. So I will see you at the end of the row. Now, as you can see, this has straightened out nicely. So I do hope that after doing this row here, yours will have straightened out as well. So I have made it to the end of my row. So I've done my last repeat of my five double crochet shell. Then it says chain one and a double crochet in the last stitch. So that means that stitch here, which you could have indicated with a stitch marker as you did it when you started that previous row. And then of course here, 
Again, we are ready for a color change, so don't do the last pull through, but cut it off and get your next color. And this time it is gold. Now, if you find that your first row here is doing a little bit of wavy action there, you might need to consider to restart with a smaller hook for your first row zero here and then comparing and then doing, of course, you know, the row one and two again and seeing how it works out. But for me, just with my three and a half, it lies flat. So if there is a tiny bit of waviness, that's okay. But if it is really wavy, then you might need to, I'm, I'm just trying to show you here what it could look like. You really might need to redo that if it looks like this. But for me, when I go like this, it's perfectly flat. So this is one of those decisions that you need to take now or in another set of the repeat. If it doesn't get better after your fourth row, you will have to make a decision. This is something that we have to do. It's just because we need a good solid row here for our border adherence. And of course, the stitch I have chosen does something to this and that's how it goes. That's crochet for you, okay? But we can take this into account. We make the effort of restarting and it should be fine. But if yours is nice and flat like that, you have nothing to worry about. Just continue as you are. So now we are ready for row three of our blanket, which is done in gold. And we are going to be doing Giza one. So if you look at the pattern, you will see that you now have a repeat of Giza 1, Giza 2, Giza 1, Giza 2. So this week we have a two row repeat. Of course, we started with a slightly different row X, but essentially the row that we are going to do now, so row 1, is the same as the row X, but because of course we worked here on top of our double crochets. We are now here working on top of our shells and that's a little bit different. So that's why we have the row X's in the pattern this time, just to give you those different locations to make it easier on yourself to place your stitches. So Giza row one, we are going to make sure we first finish row two, then we chain one, we turn, then it says one double crochet in the same stitch. So we are going to do that. We always start like that. There we go. And then we are going to chain two, one, two. You're going to skip three. So that means you skip the chain that we did here and the first two double crochets of your shell. Then you will notice that the third stitch is actually the middle stitch of your shell. And this is the one that we will be using. So it says skip three, one, two, three, and one double crochet, one chain, one double crochet in the third stitch of the shell. So one, two, and three. There we go. And you do your double crochet in there, your chain one and your double crochet. Because in fact, we are repeating this row here in exactly the same place. So make sure these tally up. Then it says chain two, one, two, skip four. So you're going to skip one, two, three four stitches and in fact that brings you again to that middle stitch of the shell so the fifth stitch so yarn over and into that fifth stitch you are going to do one double crochet one chain and one double crochet and so now we keep on repeating chain two skip four and into that third stitch of the shell to do a V stitch. There we go. 
So we keep on doing a chain two and a V on top of the middle stitch of our shell. And once again, you will be doing 38 V stitches and I will be doing 12 of them. I will see you at the end of the row. So I've done my 12 V stitches. I am now going to finish my row by doing chain two, skip three stitches. So one, two, three into the fourth one here, which is the last stitch of the row. I am going to do a double crochet. And again, don't do the pull through, but change colors. So row four is done in the eucalyptus color. We are going to do Giza two. And so we pull through the color, finishing the previous row. And we are getting started by doing chain one, return, and we do a double crochet in the first stitch. There we go. And then we are going to chain one. And now we are going to do the repeat of placing five double crochets in each V-stitch chain space. So yarn over and do your five double crochets. Four and the fifth one. There we go. And you move over to the next chain space for five more double crochets. So from here on, you will be doing a repeat of Giza 1, Giza 2, Giza 1, Giza 2, all through the 30 rows of the week. Make sure you keep going back to the table to find out what colour your next row is and what stitch repeat, what row of the week you are doing. Giza 1 or Giza 2. And of course it will be quite easy because you know in the next row here you will have to be making the V stitches and then the shells again. The V stitches and then the shells again. I hope you will enjoy this week and if you lay your work down now and you have your first row that is really really wavy you might need to start again. Okay? It is better to start again now than to regret having a little wavy row here later on. My advice to you would be restart with a smaller hook for this first row zero and then compare. And then choose which one you will continue on and then undo the other one later on as you need the colours. So good luck with week one and I will see you next week for another episode in our Egypt journey along the jewels of the Nile.